Once more, be comforted in the house of the Lord, amen? And know that with Jesus, we are never alone. Amen? Jesus is a great companion that gives us the confidence of living and the hope for the future. Hallelujah. I would like us to look carefully into a topic that I believe it will be a blessing in the life of someone. Our message is titled, No Longer a Slave to Fear. Say that to yourself. Say, I'm no longer a slave to fear. When we talk of fear, nobody can see it. Like you can see the flowers outside. Nobody can see fear because fear is a spirit. And it is the spirit of other bad spirits. Fear. And many people are under the bondage of fear. That's why I use the word no more a slave. Because a slave is someone under captivity. You are no longer free, you are bound. And you can see many people are working that they are bound under the enslavement of fear. They are working, but they are not free. They go to work, but they are not free. They come to church, but they are not free. They hear the word of God, yet they are not still free. Because they are bound under the slavery called fear. It is a spirit, believe me. Many people see fear as just a thing, but the Bible describes it as an evil spirit that Satan will give it to people that give him the access. When the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, it means that it is something that is given. God does not give us fear, so who gives fear? Let's read it. 2 Timothy 1 chapter 7. Let us hear from the scripture what God is saying. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, please. If someone is there, you run it fast for us. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Please, someone. <coughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. So, you will agree with me that fear is given. But the clear point is that God does not give it. Because he knows that with fear, there will be a lot of limitations in our lives that will lead to destruction. With fear, there is no advancement. So, he make it very clear that God does not give. So, on the opposite side, what God does not give, who give it? Exactly. So, Satan is the author of fear. And that is the spirit, the evil spirit of other evil spirits. Fear is a big and a major door of an evil spirit. Because once Satan succeeds to give you fear, the rest is okay. With fear, you can do nothing. With fear, you will be limited. With fear, you will always check. I don't want to disgrace myself. I don't want to go out because I'm nothing. You know, it happened with Gideon. The Bible says Gideon, we are not reading Judges 6. He was picking corn and he hid himself from the Midianites, from the Philistines. Why? He said, because my family is the poorest of the poor. Who am I? The fear of poverty bound Gideon until at the point where God has to send an angel that came to him and said, Gideon! You know when the angels come, first thing they will say, fear not. Because the appearance of angels is also fearful. But that one is the holy fear. This one is not a demonic fear. So they will say, fear not, so you can get the message from God. He said, listen, this is 
not your place. You are a mighty man of valor. But fear make him a timid man, a man of cowardice. Fear made him look foolish and useless. And he was hiding. Fear will make you to hide from your greatness. Fear will make you not to stand out for what God has called you to be. Fear will make you to hide behind the door. Whereas God has called you into greatness. And when the angel appeared and told Gideon, arise. Can you believe? If you doubt me, write Judges chapter 6. Go home. Learn something from there. This man that was hiding from his enemies became the mighty man that pulled down the Midianites. What limited him? Fear. What limited him? His family background. Many of us will have said, ah, my family. All of us will live in my father's house. There we were born, there we will die. We cannot go anywhere. We cannot move. Even my senior brother, I'm telling you, he married his wife. He even took one room from our father's house. The fear of failure. So I'm going to give us three dimensions today. It has changed my life. And I believe if you keep listening with your heart, not with your eyes, or this ear, with the eyes and the ears of your heart, something will change in your life for good. In the name of Jesus. Listen. I would like to share with us. No longer a slave to fear. Because many people right now, tomorrow and next, they are living in fear. They even move like this and they shake when they just think, ah, if this thing comes, what will I do? There is fear. There is torture in your heart. There is trembling in your life. You are not stable. Because fear has told you a lot of lies. You don't even know what to believe. Fear is threatening your life, threatening your family, threatening your destiny, threatening everything around you. And you are left with no option than to wait for destruction, but it will not be somebody's portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me give you a practical example before we go into the message deeply. If you know the Minister of Finance in Germany, be careful listening to news, listening to the Bible. They work together. The Minister of Finance, Thomas Schaeffer, I think from Frankfurt, he said, he committed suicide. He died on the first train line. Do you know the result of his death? He wrote it down. It is still in the Bundesrepublik Republic archives. Go today. Go put it. It is in the Bundesrepublik Republic archives. Germany. I'm not talking fake. Go and check it. He committed suicide at the breakout of Corona 2020. He said, as the Bundes Minister of Finance, he will not wait and stand the disappointment and the breakdown of Germany's economy because of the threat of the pandemic. So he was afraid, so much afraid that he wrote his will, kept the will, went for the ICD train, rushed on the line, and died. That is how he died. And today, Corona is at the site. The threats are no more like that. And where is the Minister of Finance? Is somebody getting me? Fear will kill you before your expectation. Fear will kill you before your miracle. And that is what you have to stop before it happens. Fear is a killer. I will prove it to you. Let me take you into three important points. Why I want to educate you spiritually the way my life has been transformed by this same word. That fear is a spirit that can destroy a believer or non-believer. And that spirit is given by Satan. When the brother read the scripture, it says God does not give it. What does God give? He gives us power he gives us love and he gives us a sound mind. But before I go into what God gives, let me share with you that fear is destructive and there are three dimensions or levels of fear that Satan can use and corrupt your life before your very eyes. And some of us will be thinking it is witches and wizards. No. It is the seed of fear in your heart that 
that Satan is using to manipulate your life. Number one, the fear from your past failures. A very destructive demon. Fear from your past failures. Every time you want to move forward, or you want to do great things in your life, or the way your God comes to challenge you and say, brother, you can do better. Sister, you can do better. You say, ah. Last time, maybe they took me at the company. What happened? Only after two weeks, they sacked me. I'm not making any application. I'm not making it. I'm, I'm afraid. If I go to this one again, they sack me. What will become of me? Your past is destroying your present and it's affecting your future. I don't know how much of your past that is still working in your life right now. That when you sit in your room, you just check your life. You say, ah, two men, disappointment. I was even married. It ended in divorce. Do you really think if I get married, it will come out good? No. Let me just play with the men too. Anyone that come, I play with you, you go your way. I'm afraid. I don't need marriage again. Because what I saw in marriage, Your past is not letting you move forward because you keep making an example of what happened yesterday to judge you where you are now. Forgetting what God is saying. So listen to me, child of God. When you ever fear your past, you are highly limited for the future because that past will become a barricade. It will block you. Satan will use it like a red light for those that are driving cars. You know when you see the red, you have to do what? Ambrose, you must stop. If you don't stop, what happens? Thank you. So when you are always thinking of your past, ah, the business failed. Ah, but even some people are afraid to give birth to a child because the child passed away. They don't want that experience. So that fear is making a lot of believe that God can change that story. That fear is making a lot to experience something new. And once Satan has captured you in that place, believe me, there is a red light that has stopped you. You are moving with other people, but you are stopped. That is why you will discover that year after year, you are only marking time. Because there is a stop shield called fear. There is a red light called fear, and you know it is in your, in your heart. It's telling you don't try. It's telling you don't make advancement. But listen, any day you are ready to conquer your past, I tell you, that is the beginning of a new beginning in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Then you are going to experience something new and something tremendous. Because fear is a dangerous limiter. It stops us like a stop shield. It makes us feel nothing. It makes you feel useless. It makes you see yourself like a fool. It makes you see yourself like a cowardice. And all of this is the lie of Satan. Believe me. Many a time, children of God, we think it has to be qualification, qualification upon qualification. How many things that God has given you by grace that you were not qualified? Yes, we can still believe. I keep asking, what is that problem that is making the conviction of Christians so weak? Our conviction is so weak. Very weak. And this thing that we are weak in our conviction, in our belief system, in our work with God, in our faith with God, is all the reason why Satan is standing very close to us. Number two, the second thing that fear can do to make you feel empty is what? When you have the fear that comes as a result of ignorance, the fear that comes as a result of ignorance, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, my people perish, listen carefully, for lack of knowledge. The fear that comes as a result of our ignorance. And the prophet was there said, because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. That you will not become a prince 
or a priest unto me. This one is very serious. Many children of God are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because listen to me, a child that knows that mommy and daddy, they bought my yogurt in the fridge. Eh? Even when you tell him, get out, he's taking you like this. Later on, he was taking me. He was taking me. He was taking me. Because there's the confidence that that thing is in the fridge. So even if you get out of the pizza, he said, daddy, when his mind come down, you see that yogurt? He will give it to me. The child is not ignorant. That what will make him happy is in the hands of daddy and mommy. Even though he has messed up, even though he made daddy and mommy angry, but he knows that the good things of his life, they cannot deny him of. They will still give it to him. Why are we so ignorant that no matter the mistakes we have made, no matter the messy things we have done, God is so good to abandon us. God is so faithful to abandon us. I will never leave you. I will not forsake you. Have you forgotten it? Why is our conviction so weak? Some people will just say, when fear come, knock on the door of faith. It's easy. It's very easy. Faith attracts God. Fear attracts the devil. What kind of door of faith are you knocking? You have to ask yourself that question. Because if your faith is based on religiosity, you know, religiosity, you will not be able to overcome ignorance. The kind of faith I want to introduce to you today to overcome ignorance is the faith that dwells and lives on the knowledge of the word of God. Listen, a child of God that is knowledgeable enough and knows what God is saying about him or her. When that devil come and tell you, you are going to die on this sick bed, what will you say? Satan get behind me. By his stripes I am healed. And even though he slay me, I will not let him go. Is this not what Job said? You have to know what God says 
And if you know it is not enough, you have to believe what he has said. And if you believe it is not enough, you have to act upon what you believe. The fear of ignorance is very dangerous. If you are ignorant about your life, even as a Christian, and you have no vision of where you are going, and you know nothing about you, everything that comes in your life, you just take it and say, it is so in my family. It is so. Yes. It happened with my grandfather. It happened with my grandmother. It happened with my niece. Now it is my turn. Why are you claiming satanic inheritance? Who told you? You don't claim what is bad. Did you not hear the Bible says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. If a man be in Christ, he is what? All things are. And behold, so my mother died of high blood. High blood is of a family thing. And by the age of 15, then they can be my turn. You claim it already. You see? You claim it because you know that high blood comes at a certain time. So you are even preparing for your own high blood. They fear. That is it. And when you prepare for it, it will never miss you. Satan will even bring it closer. Hello? And this is also that, that fear that comes within that age we call the middle age of life. That middle age is very critical, both for the men and for the women. So Satan will tell you, by this time, okay, men, they, they say a fool at 40, he is a fool forever. Women, they are old, I don't know whether it's a fool at 30 or what it is, whatever. These are slogans. These are slogans in the world. As a Christian, do you believe these slogans that when you are 30, when you are 40, when you are 50, you can no longer marry, you can no longer have children because the slogans of the world have said so. You believe it, you write it in your book, you are afraid of it. So when they come after you, why are you surprised? You didn't expect anything more. You also believe on the same slogan. But Jesus said what? This is knowledge now. Because the first one I said is ignorance. Because they said so. One professor said, menopause must come at what? Oh. So you just prepare yourself for the, for the menopause. Because the professor said it. You are afraid. Menopause, like one of my spiritual mother told me, he said, that is when men have come to a pause. Pause, menopause. Men have paused for God to take over. Men have come to their end. So now, God, you take over. That is why God took over in the life of Sarah and Abraham. Menopause did not work there. Hello? It didn't work for Hannah and Elkanah. It didn't work. To tell you that, that is the fear of man. Like, for example, now, if a Bible quiz come in here, like, say, some Bible teachers, they come, they want to do Bible question. I will not be afraid. You know why? Because I've been training myself every time on the world. So if they want to bring 100 questions, I will be like, oh, enough. Even though I will say, maybe I might not know all, but the fear of failure will not be there. Because I read the Bible, I teach it, I learn from it. So I will be like, okay, professor, question one. He will say, who was the mother of Jesus? I will say, I understand that. Not be, not be Mary, you know? Because I'm confident that it's okay, I know. But now, if another medical practitioner come in here, I want to talk about science. What is um, something like, let's say, an eye specialist, what are they expected to do in the operation room? I will just scratch my leg like this and look for the way to go out. Because I don't know anything to say. You see? Fear will creep me, that is natural. Like, this is not my area. So I want to run away from that interview. But we are talking about spiritual things here. There is no interview Satan should bring to your life that you should run away. If you run away, you are ignorant, and it will use your ignorance as a tool to destroy you. Even if you don't know anything to say, when Satan comes in your room, when you are alone and he tells you that, I have told you, this problem will kill you. If you don't know anything, just do like how Jesus 
Moses or said to Peter, say, sit and get behind me. I am a child of God. I will be what God says I will be. Try to use the good, the positive, over the negative confessions of Satan. Because when he comes, he wants to put us down. He wants to make the church sick. Make the church feel of, full of sad people. Worn out Christians. That even to say amen, they will say, I'm saying amen for what? You will be judging everything in the house of God. Why should I say amen? Would that amen give me food? I'm going home now. Do I even have anything in my pot? The Bible says the widow woman, she had nothing. And the prophet still came to her and said, make me food to eat. If it is you and I, we will say, but not prophet. Do you even have the spirit of God? If you have the spirit of God, you will know that I'm a widow. I don't have a husband. I don't even have money. What kind of a thing is this? Do you even have spirit to see? She only said, man of God. As you can see, your daughter does not have anything in the house. Then he told her, Get the pots. Put water inside. Even get them up to 12. Put water. And she did it. What happened? Because she said, it's a small flower that we have. If I eat this flower between me and my son, we just eat and we die. Some of us, we have the fear of death. I feel like I will not make it. I've tried. I've been in Italy, I've tried. I went to Belgium, I tried. Even Holland said, I don't know. Or like Denmark, which country have you been there? Europe will not fear me. Let me just die because they shame to go back to Africa. The fear of failure. Why are you afraid? Why are we so afraid? God has not given up on us. We should not give up on ourselves. He that has life has hope. A living dog is better than a dead lion. This widow woman did not die. The Bible says when she made that small flower, she gave to the man of God out of faith. She believed that there's a prophet. Something will happen. And the Bible says she ate, her son ate. They ate for many days and they didn't die again. So I'm saying today in the name of Jesus, whatever are your fears, they will not kill you in Jesus' name. Amen. You will live to overcome your fears and God will make a way for you where there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. And the tenth level of fear, before we round up today, is the fear that comes from the opinion of other people. When you live your life and you are only thinking of, what will they say about me? What will people say? What will people say? Oh my God. If they hear this one, or if they don't hear this one, your problem is people, not even yourself. You worry a lot about what people will say. The Bible says, I should tell you, that you see that worry you are worrying, it will not even change one color of hair in your head. You are in Germany here. You worry about what your family will say in Africa. What your village people will say. Have you worried about what God will say about you? This is the fear that is killing, is the most deadly one that is killing people. Because you cannot live a comfortable life just because of what? The eyes and the ears of people. I tell you today, that one is a pity. If you live here today, make a decision and say, I'm not a slave to fear. I will not fear my past. I will not fear the ignorance of things I don't know. I will trust the Holy Spirit to help me, even in the areas of my limitations. And I will not fear or worry what people will say about me. The devil not say it. I'm not afraid of what man can do to me. Many of us are afraid of what man can do. That is why we go to Juju, we go to Babalao, we go to, to Marabu, we go to many, many places. Because we are afraid of what man can do. Where is your God, child of God? Where did you keep your God? That you are so much afraid of man that you live a life of timidity. The Bible says fear will torment you. There is a torment in your mind that nobody is seeing it on your eyes. That your heart is shaking. Fear is tormenting you. Can somebody say today, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am 
am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Hi, Jesus. Hi, a child.